Now, some 9,000 people die of cardiovascular disease in this country every year. 90,000 people are living with heart failure and 20,000 people are admitted to hospital with heart issues annually. But what if there was an early detection system that could be deployed? Could that change the picture for thousands of people? My dad grew up in Ireland and he went to America when he was about 16. Then after himself and my mother got married, they decided to move back to Ireland. Thomas O'Malley has advanced heart failure. He had had some cardiac history, I suppose since about 2008. That was when yeah. you had your first heart attack and then he had a triple bypass. But it got to the point once the fluid started building up then that even to walk out, he would only get outside to the driveway and you just knew this couldn't go on. To build up uh, pressure, you know, like a trouble breathing and that, and then uh, usually have to go into the hospital when it reached a certain point. In 2020, Thomas spent nine long weeks in hospital. His immediate future promised more long stays needing acute care, alternating between good periods at home before his heart failure would again require emergency attention. When the fluid builds up, I guess, trouble breathing. I wouldn't be able to sleep laying down, really. I wouldn't be able to sleep pretty much at all. Thomas's life changed when he was selected as patient six on a new clinical trial run by Dr. Fessel Sharif in Galway University yeah, Hospital. We place a sensor in the pulmonary artery of these patients who have advanced heart failure. If the pressure rises, we have 96 hours before patient gets breathless. So during that time, we can introduce or change their medications to bring their pulmonary pressures down. And by doing so, we avoid a hospitalization. Access is through the groin, femoral vein, and we uh, advance this sensor uh, through the right side of the heart, and we place it in the right pulmonary artery. Dr. Sharif now has 37 patients in his trial, all fitted with cardiac sensors, a kind of early warning system for flare-ups. Thomas was fitted with his in June 2020. Please place the probe comfortably on your finger. It's part of the routine now every morning. I don't even think about it. I just go through the, the list and get it done. That's with checking your blood pressure. Yeah. It checks your pulse, your weight. I do that first thing every morning and... Uh, Send it off to Galway. If I get a call, that means that I did something wrong, you know, but uh, so far, so good, you know. So far, so good indeed. Joining us live now from Galway, we have Professor Fessel Sharif, who you saw in that film. Fessel, this has the potential to keep a huge amount of people out of hospital, doesn't it? Thank you for having me. Um, yes, absolutely. I think uh, we know now uh, that the intracardiac pressures or pulmonary artery pressure is the gold standard for monitoring these patients for um, how the heart failure is progressing. And if you can monitor them early, you can optimize their treatment and therefore reduce hospitalization. So this treatment is all about reducing hospitalization, improving their quality of life in the community so they don't have to come in unexpectedly in the middle of the night uh, with an acute exacerbation or decompensation of heart failure. Of course. So it's bringing down those hospital numbers, but it also means the likes of Thomas there has a totally different quality of life because you can analyse that data remotely. Uh, it is a very impactful uh, number of things. Number one, patients become part of the treatment team because they're actively engaging with the nursing staff and the medical staff and uh, transmitting their pressures regularly to the hospital. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that by monitoring these pressures, which is only available in uh, ICU settings or cardiac theater settings, uh, we're able to do it remotely, which is remarkable. Uh, even if when the patient comes to the hospital to a heart failure clinic, uh, we can do clinical examination, we can take their history, we can monitor their weight, but we won't know anything about their cardiac pressures uh, unless we bring them to cardiac theater or to ICU. But with this technology, you can have cardiac pressures 
wherever the patient is, as long as they have access to internet. It's quite incredible. It's a sophisticated device. We can see that from the film. Does that mean it's going to be an expensive one? Uh, the device is currently uh, going through uh, completing clinical trials. We have completed three large clinical trials. Uh, imminent uh, submission to FDA is now awaited. Once the FDA approves it, we'll be looking at regulatory bodies to put a price on it. So it's not readily available in Ireland yet, but I think, or, or anywhere else. But I think once we have the regulatory approval, uh, it will be available then. Do you think, I'm sure there's viewers tonight tuned in thinking that could be a game changer for my life. Do you think there is the possibility in the future of this being rolled out? I think we're seeing uh, a, a big change in um, uh, chronic uh, disease, disease burden in Ireland uh, and globally. We have a lot of patients who are living longer with heart failure, with hypertension and technologies like these would really transform because patients are now very closely monitored when they are not in the hospital, out in the community. And now with this launch of healthcare uh, in the hubs, these patients can be uh, regularly monitored by uh, nurses who are well able to read those readings and engaging with the patient. And just by having that contact, you can reduce hospitalization. So certainly a game changer. An absolute game changer. It's a pleasure to talk to you, Dr. Uh, Fassel, this evening. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.